Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. It really seems like everything is coming together for Tesla's version 12 of full self-driving software, including getting enough data and compute power. But this might also hint that Tesla's first-of-a-kind data center is seeing some progress as well. Hope you have not forgot about that, that Tesla is working on their own one-of-a-kind data center, and that Elon has just been talking about the shortage in voltage transformers, silicon, and electricity. I think Tesla is cooking up some something very special behind the scenes. And it seems to all come together by the end of this year. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. We have to talk a little more about Tesla's full self-driving as there are a lot of exciting things happening right now. We got a lot of great new footage of version 12 this week and some of the experts are getting really excited as well. So of course, so am I. Bradford Ferguson was out testing the version 12 full self-driving this week and boy did Tesla's AI system pull some great moves and it sounds like Bradford's mind was pretty blown. Basically a right and a left and you're done. Stop for the red, it's proceeding. Needs to get all the way over it. Oh my God. <laughs> just with that. Dude. It just got all the. That was cool. It went what? diagonal. What? It went diagonal. That was great. What? Is this going, is this, did it, is it recording? Yeah, you're recording. I don't think it can go across the street where it thinks it can. But let's see what it does. Well, it can, we can turn left here if we go all the way over. <laughs> no way! <laughs> you at, what? Another crazy. Are you kidding me? V11 would never do that in a million years. Whoa, that was awesome. But he also took James Dauma out to test the version 12 for self-driving and drove places that James have tried with version 11 before. And version 12 was doing a much better job according to James, that is an expert in this field. Noticing here, James, with this road. Yeah, so it, there's, it's not moving back and forth. Like it, it, it's a, on 11, it, it, it moves to the right between parked cars and then moves back. Yeah, so right here, we need to go over the line. Very nice, look at that. Yeah. Waited for that other car, slowed down. So actually, so V11 crosses the line in that situation, but it goes much farther across the line. Like okay. this 12 is a much more human. Humans will not cross the line more than they need to. So this is always an interesting situation. And that was really smoothly handled. 11 will get to that stop sign, see the truck. That guy's truck is always parked there. Um, and then get kind of confused because it's not sure if he's, it's not totally clear if it's stopped or parked because of the place that it's at. So it'll be kind of jerky a little while, then it'll decide it's parked, finish the turn. That was really nice pedestrian handling. There wasn't any hesitation there. So this, this is only one lane wide. This is a section of road where, you know, oh. you have to stop at one end or the other. That's cool. Okay, let's see how it handles this pedestrian. Oh. That was super nice. So this is where you kind of get the splits. See, it, it didn't stop and wait uh -huh. to see. And it doesn't 11. always stop there. Oh, okay. Okay, so. So, so normally James was saying this that motorcycle. at these splits it would stop. Um, so we'll see how it does on the rest of the splits. So uh, uh, 11, when it sees that motorcycle, it pauses. Like to make sure, because it looks like it's about to pull out. Cross the traffic. Road. So there's okay. no, the amount of hesitation is, it's almost completely gone. Mm -hmm. Like it's radically reduced. Mm -hmm. So this is a place where, where 11 stops to look to, as if it's an intersection. Mm -hmm. 12 doesn't. <laughs> oh, it can't actually. I'm, go through, it can't go yeah, through that gate. it can't go through there. <clears throat> That's 
interesting. It's doing a U-turn, unprompted. And I just put in a new destination. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> and James actually think that Tesla does not need any new architecture to solve full self-driving only more data as he wrote an X. This is so good that I wonder if Autopilot team might not shift the development approach. Up until now big improvement have required big changes, but the range of behavior that are being effectively implemented with E2E path planning and control suggests to me that they can get to the rest of the way to better than a human solely on top of more data and training. As I have been saying about version 12, I personally think this is it. And James seems to agree. And he also wrote on X that version 12 is going to be over a hundred times reduction in intervention compared to version 11. This is not an incremental upgrade. It's a leap forward. And Elon also replied to James and wrote, Thanks, that is an accurate assessment. Training compute is currently our limiting factor, but that issue is being resolved fast. As we know, Tesla is building data compute power as fast as they can, and it sounds like they are making some good progress on this as well. As we heard Elon before saying they will not be compute constrained by the end of this year. So I think it is looking more and more positive for something really special by the end of this year. So it seems like Tesla is doing very well, both on all the compute clusters they have bought from Nvidia, but probably also a good sign that Dojo is also doing pretty well. Maybe Tesla is even making some progress on their first of a kind data center that Elon talked about last year. As we saw on the job description last year where Tesla wrote, this role will lead the end-to-end -end design and engineering of Tesla's first of a kind data center and will be one of the key members of the factory's engineering team. And we know Tesla has taken over one of the old Twitter data centers, leased from NTT Data, that the social media company was using in Sacramento. So if we are really getting to a place where Tesla is no longer compute constrained, that might be a little sign that Tesla's one-of-a-kind data center is also coming along nicely. As Elon recently said, my prediction is that we will go from an extreme silicon shortage today to probably a voltage transformer shortage in about a year and then an electricity shortage in about a year, two years. Basically stating that the limiting factor for scaling AI in the future will be electricity. So you can bet your dollar that Elon Musk is making sure, just like with everything else, that Tesla is working on a solution to make sure they are not constrained by these factors. So Tesla has probably ordered the amount of silicon they need for the foreseeable future and the same for the voltage transformers and of course the last thing that was electricity. So Tesla's own data centers and supercomputer will probably be run by Tesla Solar and Megapacks and being managed with their powerful software we all know from Tesla like Virtual Machine Mode, Power Hub, Autobator, Virtual Power Plant and so on. Because Tesla needs more and more compute power not just for their full self-driving data but for all their management of their energy business as well to handle their machine mode, the power hub, the auto beta, the virtual power plant and so on that are all growing and needs compute power. But if we are looking a bit further into the future, I can really see electricity becoming the limiting factor because according to this paper, their estimates running a complete simulation of a human brain would require 2.3 gigawatt of energy. That is about 5% of the UK's total power requirements, meaning simulating just 20 human brains like this would require as much electricity produced as the entire UK. 20 human brains. So when we eventually get to AGI, it does seem like energy will be the limiting factor. 
But if Tesla will not be compute constrained by the end of this year, they are probably really working on something big to handle all of this. But I don't think Tesla will not have thought this through all the way down through the supply chain to make sure they get rid of any bottlenecks they see, like the voltage transformers, the silicon and electricity. So we might also get to hear a bit more about their first of a kind data center by the end of this year as well. But for version 12 a full self-driving beta software to run as smoothly as it does already in this early stage. And then knowing that Tesla will not be compute constrained in about 8 to 10 months, well I can only see a very exponential growth coming for the capabilities of Tesla's full self-driving AI. And we might just have something very, very special waiting for us by the end of this year. And the timing couldn't have been much better when it comes to Europe, because on top of that, Florian from Mr. Green EV wrote on X, break news, full self-driving is coming to Europe in 2025. And that is a beta he's talking about. The new regulation is adopted. I will keep you posted when we have more information. So he knows something we don't, but that would be absolutely awesome, as we do know that they were supposed to discuss the approval for 2025, so hopefully that is what has happened, that this has been approved for 2025. Can't wait to get mine, because Tesla will probably also be an order of magnitude further along by then, thanks to all the data and compute power coming this year. And we might have Tesla blowing everybody's mind here in Europe in 2025 with the full self-driving software, as not many outside our little Tesla bubble knows just how far ahead Tesla is with this software, as no one has really seen all the great videos coming out of the US with it, version 12 of Tesla full self-driving software like the ones I've just shown you today. That is not knowledge for the everyday Joe. So I am more optimistic about Tesla's road to full self-driving than ever before. And we should have a very interesting year ahead of us. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>